another episode of From the Couch. And although it's via Zoom, it is so cool to connect with Taya from Hillsong. How are you, love? I am very good. Thank you for having me, Bonnie. This is fun. Yeah, I'm <laughs> so glad because I, I've been wondering, how are you? How is everything going? I know that Hillsong United you know, has so many things in the works right now, despite the fact that everybody's kind of, you know, staying and sheltering at home. So let's catch up. So let's talk about you personally. How are you, love? Yes. I'm very kind. I love that. Um, I'm going very good. I mean, I have to be grateful um, because I know at this time, like it's a really challenging time for many people for many different reasons. Yep. And um, the fact that I have my health, my husband and I still have jobs. Um, like I have to be grateful and, yeah. and then also hopefully use this opportunity to look around and be able to help other people and bless other people. And I love that. Um, for me, uh, that, that's also the gift of music and, and what it does to yeah. you know, people's um, hearts and I think as well like mindsets and hopefully lifts um, people's spirits as well and puts truth in their mouth to be able to confess it on uh, particularly hard days as well. So I'm yeah. thankful for music in this time for sure and the gift of worship. I love that. So the, one of the last times that I spoke with you, we had a very good conversation about being single and celebrating that. And now you are married and still kind of in that newlywed place. So talk to me about that. What is, what is the differences here? How are you feeling? Yeah, um, well, uh, still happily married. I love my husband, Ben. <laughs> he's, um, he's such a gift. I think, I mean, part of it, I think, was waiting for the right person. Yeah. And I know that no one wants to be told to wait. It's such a... Um, I don't know. It has negative. It's not fun. Yeah. It's not fun. Yeah. 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 But there's, there's something that, um, I mean, you know, in the harder seasons of my life, um, even though you don't love being in that season and you don't want to go back to it. Um, I have to be so grateful for those seasons because that was like probably the seasons of my greatest growth. And, and so I love that, um, you know, how the cliche thing of where, um, people say that, you know, the waiting season is like preparing and, and you don't yeah. stop your life, but actually you continue to go into everything that God's called you into. And so yeah. it's so true. Like my husband and I talk about, um, he calls it the three years of the wilderness or the abyss because <laughs> the abyss. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, no, you know, that's fair. That can feel yeah. really feel for people. I mean, I like that actually, because there's a lot of people that loneliness can be overwhelming and it can feel like an abyss. And to be on the other side of that, to realize that he went through that as well, waiting for you. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And, and he was kind because he said, um, cause we went on an initial date and then I said, I'm so sorry. Like, I think I have feelings for somebody else. I'm like, I'm going to have to follow that through really and yeah and wow. so then, so so it really was like three years of him pursuing but not in a um you know overbearing kind of manner right. but just being consistent and being there and right and I'd always said to a friend who wanted it to be a quick thing she's like I'm praying for a quick work for you and I'm like no 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 like I haven't made like obviously I haven't met the person so maybe I don't know what I'm truly looking for so I don't want it to be quick I need to see someone over three years you know, to see them in wow. the highs and the lows and all that. So secretly, like, wow. I love the Lord hears everything. And so he's like, I'm going to give you three years. You thought you would be dating for three years, but you would see someone without romantic feelings when they're um, in, in good spirits. And then also when maybe they're angry or maybe when they're not okay. And you see the, the consistency. And so I love that God hears everything and like does it in his own way. And it always ends up better than, you know, how we would expect. Yeah. But in that period, he learned patience like nothing else. And I, you know, I reckon that was just probably for us as a married couple and, and the patience that he would probably need to be able to do with me. So I'm like, thank you, Lord, for that. And yeah. also, um, I think I have that time to like look back on and, you know, truly, um, I think I was like kind of touching on this at the start that, that it's, the, it's so like the right person. And sometimes you don't fully realize it because you're growing together and you're, I'm basically unwrapping Ben as a present every single day, another new layer as, as a gift because the things that we are even heading into 
together like this year, I just think God's timing is so perfect. And it's always in hindsight because you never really know it at the time. Right. But the things that we're going to be walking into, that we would do that together. And yeah. I didn't realize it was also such a gift of having someone um, that you get to lean into with their walk with God. Because yeah. they relate differently than, say, what I do with Jesus in my own way. And, and, and um, I get to lean into his wisdom and to his revelation and to his protection and his leaning into the Holy Spirit in a whole new way in a prayer life that I haven't experienced before. And so it's very challenging in the best way, not because he says anything, but I look at his life and I'm like, like, I want that. Right. And so he's right. leading our family in a way that I didn't know that I could have. So I love that. Well. I'm so happy for you. Like I really am because again, I'm not a patient person. It's, it's not my gift. It's not, um, you know, and it's really funny because I'm coming at this from a totally different perspective than you are. I married my high school sweetheart and we've only ever known each other and we grew up together. And I feel like in the toughest times that it's like a couple of, of trees, you know what I'm saying? That have you ever seen trees that actually they grow t together and they come, they become one tree and they're still branching out. They're still doing things. Yeah. And I think God kind of knew what my heart needed. And so mm -hmm. he put my sweet husband, Ernest in my life very early so that I would have that person to lean on. And I think in some ways, God knew your heart as well, that he knew that you needed time yourself to be who you are, to learn, to grow. And so that now at this season in your life that he's put this perfect compliment to you in your life, his timing is perfect. Yeah. Is perfect. And, I love that. And I'm just like, I, yet again, it's just another testament to God's goodness and his yeah. faithfulness. And, yeah. And I know when people are in that season, it's, it sounds so cliche and it, and it sounds I know. You're like, Oh, that's just what you say when you get married. But like, truly, like, I'm so grateful that I didn't go with who okay. I thought it was and follow my own things, but to wait and to say, Holy Spirit, like, I don't want to ever question if I made this happen, but you, would you speak? And would you, like, I even said, like, at a, within that time when I was slowly like opening up again, right. um, I just prayed because people said, you know, he's awesome. And like, he, he's not going to stay single forever. And I'm just right. like, oh. right. but yeah. I didn't feel peace about making it happen. So I said, Holy spirit, like, I want to make sure this is what, what you have for my life. And so you're going to have to cause a situation or a text or something. I don't want to ever wonder, is this really like what you had? And so it was hard because then it was like, you know, for a month and a half, I was like, oh my gosh, like, maybe what did I do? Yes, yes, yeah. And I think I started to realize, <laughs> oh, he's awesome. Yeah. But then the Holy Spirit, like, he's, he's the greatest hooker up for us. So <laughs> I love that. I love that. We could actually do that. The hashtag, hashtag Holy Spirit greatest hooker upper. So, I mean, yeah. I feel like that's going to be our hashtag for this particular moment of from the couch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And everybody knows that is from Taya uh, and not so much from me. Um, you know, I know that part of me wants to say, all right, so let's talk about quarantine. You know what? I, I kind of don't want to. I want to talk about the future. I want to talk about the hopeful things that are going on that you're seeing, both for yourself personally, but also for Hillsong. What, what can we look forward to, love? I mean, like, what are some of the good things that we can say, hey, yeah, a little bit crazy right now, but here's what we're working on. So let's hear it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're all part of a local church um, here in Sydney, Australia. That right. It's a little church. Me. It's a little <laughs> bit of church. Just a little tiny. Yeah. A <laughs> couple of people. It's pretty Small cool. church, a lot of people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but currently it's, you know, in many living rooms and, yeah. and, and, you know, God's hand has been, you know, so upon our senior pastors, Brian and Bobby Houston and how it's yeah. gone global. Like it's crazy. Yeah. And it's yeah. a God story and um, all, all the glory to Jesus for that. And so it's been pretty crazy how um, every, like even just the normality of that and what we usually do, like for example, when, whenever we're not touring, we're at home and right. you better believe we're leading every weekend and we're yep. trying to write the song list and we're trying to seek the Lord and go, God, what do you want to do this Sunday within that, yeah. you know, 20 minute period. And, and so when all this happened, um, it was definitely 
like, okay, how are we going to reach people within the homes, you know, recording during the week and and how do we do that socially distance and all that kind of stuff. But there's been some real um, sweet things that have come out of this season, even with us as a church, like we've been gathering together um, on Wednesday mornings for our churches in in America. So it's, that's probably like five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, you know, Phoenix, LA, New York, um, everywhere, Dallas, like South America. Yeah, everywhere and um and then it's also been you know for us here in sydney 7 p.m on a thursday night we've just been having 30 minutes uh worth of prayer it's like a, a mega prayer night we oh, have nice. like a worship team just like going in and out and our senior pastor praying um just like by name people that have put in their prayer requests yeah. and believing and praying and having our entire church family step into this 30 minutes like I think as well being 30 minutes is so doable for everyone and it's mm-hmm. just after they put the kids to bed and you know and it's been powerful and it's unified us even though everything in this season would try and isolate and bring people apart and so um I mean that's been such a gift I think that's something that's I, I like hopefully that. will you know I feel like it's igniting um just the what a gift prayer is and um yet again that we should never stray too far from you know the foundations and the principles of of our faith and what we believe in and and what jesus did as well you know and he regularly took time aside to spend time with his father and pray and right so we should also be doing that as well um but then you know we've had this amazing opportunity to also say with hillsong united bring out um another in the fire in a whole different way like i I know like so excited <laughs> yeah and so and that was a gift um in itself because we had planned to do that right um and we had recorded it uh, in the studio you know before all this happened probably like maybe a week before potentially and then it was like okay we need to do a music video and we're all locked in our homes yeah. and and <laughs> you know not not all of us are technologically blessed probably right. more so other people <laughs> yeah, right. myself included and so it's like okay you know maybe we just release this as honestly as we can and and that right. looked like right. being in our homes just like other people would be right and right. yeah and I think as well like it's it was one of my favorite songs to do when we were on the road for the people tour because every single night when we would meet people in this um meet and greet scenario something had shifted um Mm. people weren't just coming to like impress me and i'm here to like sit with you know my arms folded but i'm i'm here to worship and um and i'm also desperate for god to move in my situation and in my life and so it was always a really um significant moment because we also met people that were walking in the valley of the shadow of death you know and and we believe the bible we believe that it's living and active that the word of god is eternal that um he doesn't change also because he's the word made flesh as well and so you know we have to believe that what the bible is saying is true and that you know when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death you won't fear any evil um that when you are with the shepherd you lack nothing even if it doesn't end up going how you expect and it was the most beautiful thing to and so many times you're choking back tears or maybe you're just crying as you're leading because you're just like you know ever you know like just so many moments um you know yeah just like singing this song and and declaring the truth because it's it's derived from that story in the bible you know Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and they were in the fire it's not like they they almost got in but they didn't they were in the fire and then when uh when the you know the uh the ruler and and also like the soldiers they're like hey wait a second there's a fourth man in the fire like is that not Jesus, like, I, you know, I was reading Psalm 91 the other day and it says, um, he who calls on me, I will answer him. And it says, and I will be with him in trouble. As in like, when you are in trouble, he will be with you. And I just love that that's actually the full message of this. Um, God didn't say you're going to have a perfect life and no trouble, but he said, you know, we live in a fallen world. And he says, there will be trouble, but take heart, which means to be brave and be courageous for I have overcome the world. And so we have this promise. And, you know, I think even as like, Jesus is so good. Like we have the promise of eternal life. We have a a promise of 
no tears, full healing, to get to see Almighty God truly with our eyes. And so, like, no matter what we face, like, we have that promise. And yet, even when we face stuff, he doesn't say, I will be distant, but I will come in and I will be with you. And um, I, I will set out, like, makes me weep, like, I'll set out a table in front of your enemies. And, and you know, like, there's just, he's just so good. And, and so I think that that's what gives me conviction when I sing this song. And, and the other thing that um, is really special about this song is that, um, I, not many people uh, would have caught this when we were just about to bring this song out, but right. um, there's a guy within our church in, in New York and he's really good friends with Jolie, Chris Davs, Chris Davenport, and he wrote this song with Joel. And um, it actually came out of a, a, a hard season where he was trying to figure out what he was believing, him and his wife, when they had received a diagnosis over their son. And... Um, please forgive me. I don't fully remember um, if it was uh, being on the spectrum of autism or if it was Asperger's. I'm not 100% okay. sure. Yeah. Um, but he received a diagnosis, and then he's. I love that it's like um, those are also probably the most powerful songs when they come from a real place where you are asking, like, what do I believe, and what am I going to confess in the face of this particular fire? And so it's amazing. So, and, and, he, and they're still walking through that. And yet right. they have, they made this decision to make this their confession. And then just as we started, we were just about to release this video. Um, Cause he hadn't spoken yet. And I, I think Rhodes is now four years old and he called a video and he said, Hey Rhodes, can you say this? He says, um, never. And he goes, never be be alone and it was like just oh. like the faithfulness of god even you know and and the reason why again like it's so special is on the night that we recorded it um not this single version but the original version which i think just gave me like fire when you know singing it myself and declaring it yeah. um they turned to each other joel and Daz, and he just looked at him and it was just like with honest but like, this is my confession. And then they started seeing this thing, that, which I don't think it got released, but he just said, and even if he doesn't, like, I will still praise him. And even if yeah. he doesn't, I will still praise him. And then we just go back into it. And yeah. so, and that's exactly what, you know, the, the boys in the Bible said. And even if he doesn't, like, yeah. we will not bow to the things of this world because I know I'll never be alone. So, whew, I, I love I, you. I, I just, yeah. I, you know, it's really funny. It's, um, I find that despite the fact that there are so many miles between us right now, that it's not just those words that I kind of needed to hear because like so many people, I have like a roller coaster of emotions right now. I'll go yeah. from one minute of just being like, it's going to be, you know, I got this. And, and the next moment I'm like, this is so overwhelming. And it's not just what we're facing with the pandemic. It's everything that's happening. It's like we talked about that there are so many people that are struggling right now and it's people looking at Christians going, how do you guys still have your faith when all of this is going on? It's because what you said, it's not that he promised us it would be easy. It's the fact that we will never be alone during this. And so I just think to myself, if you needed to hear that in that song, I needed to hear those words. There's somebody watching this right this very second that needed to hear those words exactly from us so that they know, hey, it's going to be okay. So you know what? I, 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 I don't always do this, but I feel like it would be such a good moment. Taya, would you pray for everybody that might be watching this right now mm -hmm. and just lift them up? I would, I would love that, please. Yeah, I love that. It would be my honor. Okay. Lord Jesus, I thank you that um, in your word, it says where two or three are gathered. And I know that there are two of us here, Lord, and even more people that are watching, Father. It says that you're in their midst. And so I thank you that you're here right now. I thank you that you see um, every single person that is um, under the sound of my voice, God, and, and meeting, meeting here um, today. They may think it's meeting with us, but it's actually meeting with you because you're here. And I thank you for your presence. I thank you that you are the lifter of their head. You are the lifter of our head, Lord. You're the one who comes close to the brokenhearted. You're the one that has an ear 
that is bent towards us, God, because it says in, in your word that we are the apple of your eye. Um, you delight in us, Lord God, and you love us so much, God, and we probably don't even fully comprehend that, Father. And I just thank you that you're here. I thank you that your Holy Spirit wants to minister to people and wants to um, speak to them and comfort them and guide them. I thank you that it says in your word that your Holy Spirit is an ever-present help in time of trouble. I also thank you for the promise that when Jesus, he came down and he died on that cross and he rose again and he said, it's good that I go so I can send the helper to you, which is the Holy Spirit. And I just thank you, Father God, that when you sent your son, there was so much promise that um, we are yet to see in our lives, Lord God. And so I thank you that there's an open door in heaven, that there's so much um, blessing and provision and so many things that you actually want to speak and um, into being in people's lives that have yet to be, Lord. So I just pray that people would take hope um, in this moment, Lord. I thank you that you are closer than we know, Father, that you know every single hair on every single head, Lord God, and which means you actually know them inside and out, you know, the things that they need, God, that they haven't even asked for, Lord. And so I just thank you that you're drawing people closer to you in this season and that, um, that we have that promise that no matter what, we will never be alone, that you are with us, that you never forsake us, that you have a good plan. I thank you in Romans 8, 28, God, that it says in your word that you work all things together for good, for those who love you according to your plans and your purposes and your will, Lord God. And so I just ask that you would, um, I don't know, reignite vision within people that are listening in, Lord. I pray that you would spark hope and joy, Father, for you are the hope of um, all the world, Lord, and your name is Jesus. And so I just declare Jesus over every life that's listening. And I thank you, God, that you just have good things for people, that people would take heart and they would uh, learn to turn towards you, Father God, and trust you, Lord, and, and know that you have good things ahead for them. So I commit them to you in, in Jesus' name, and I thank you that your face is towards them, Lord God, your countenance is towards them, and you are so good. We love you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Six feet apart, miles away, if I were there, I would hug you so hard. I would hug you so, so hard, my friend, until I get to see you. Stay healthy. Take care of yourself. Thank you for that prayer. Thank you for the time. Love you dearly. Yeah, ah, another you. wonderful episode of From the Couch. I'm Bonnie Curry, my friend Taya Hillsong. We love you. Bye. <laughs> love you. Bye.